Inside this video right here, I'm gonna go over exactly the transport decision. Do you go lights and sirens or no lights and sirens? Here we go. Hey everyone, Evan, the paramedic coach here. I'm back here with a brand new video. Make sure to smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's dive in to today's topic, and here it is. When do you go lights and sirens versus no lights and sirens? You're gonna be in charge. So I'm first gonna talk about a basic life support call or issue, EMT. Then we're gonna move in and talk about a paramedic level or uh, going lights and sirens with no lights and sirens. So BLS and ALS. So let's first talk about the BLS. So you are an EMT and you have a patient and you're unsure if you should go lights and sirens, maybe call a medic or go no lights and sirens. Here's the main factor. And, this, and we're gonna talk about different things that may occur, but here's what it is. The first thing is this. If you as a basic life support provider, you know in your heart that this patient needs something that you cannot provide, meaning they need ALS care. You are going lights and siren to the hospital either way, that we know. Now, if we're gonna call a medic or not, we'll talk about that in a second. But there's two main things that determine, and this goes for everybody, BLS and ALS, whether we're going lights and sirens to the hospital or not, and here it is. The first, is the mental status of the patient, okay? If you have a patient that is alert and oriented times four versus a patient who normally is A and O times four, they're alert and oriented, but today they're confused, that's a red flag, lights and sirens, okay? Now let's talk about the other piece. Well, the other piece about that is this. If your patient is altered and has unstable vital signs and you're an EMT or you're a medic, you're probably going lights and sirens in the hospital, okay? So the two things that determine whether you go lights or no lights, start with this. Is there something out of your scope of practice that they really need, either a medic has or the hospital? Lights and sirens. Pull the trigger on it. Now, the second thing is, do we have an unstable mental status or an unstable vital? So for example, you can see on the screen here, patient A. So patient A, Let's say they're complaining of abdominal pain, but they have, they're alert and oriented, so ANO times four, their blood pressure is 130 over 72, okay? They have a heart rate of 100, and they have a respiration of 14, and they have no other complaints, but they have eight out of 10 abdominal pain. If you are an EMT, we would take that patient, that, okay, check the boxes, just abdominal pain, okay, we look okay, all right. Let's go, no lights. Now look over here, patient B, same complaint. Now they have 10 out of 10 abdominal pain. They are altered mental status. They say it's the worst pain of their life. Vital signs, 88 over 40, 120 heart rate, 24 respirations. See the difference? Same complaints, two different patients. No lights, lights. Okay, now let's talk about some things that a paramedic might encounter. I'm gonna give you a few pearls. So there are some things I wanna talk about at the paramedic level. This is why I wanna bring it up. We're talking about EKGs. One of the most common things, you know, if you are already a, a medic, you understand that you, you get the, the core principle of vital signs, mentation, we went over that, right? Something the hospital has that the patient needs you don't have as a medic. Those are reasons we'd go lights and sirens, right? Obviously we're talking about alerts, stroke alerts, you know, trauma alerts, you know, uh, cath lab alerts, you know all that, you understand that. But now, what if you get a patient that has an ominous EKG? Or maybe an EKG that maybe you've never seen before and you're on the fence. Well, I see hyperacute T waves, is this hyperkalemia or a start of an MI? Now, both things are, could be a reason to go lights and sirens, right? So let's just talk about a few of these things. Here's the first. If you see an EKG and you're on the fence, 
You can't definitively call it an MI for whatever reason. I'm not you. I'm not in your shoes. I'm just telling you from my own experience. You got to keep going. You got to keep burning EKGs. You got to keep burning EKGs and I want you to move lights and sirens. Because think about it. If you, now you're the patient and you had a medic and they were on the fence. Is this critical, not critical? Would you want them to go critical or would you want them to not go critical? You see the risk there? So it, when, when in doubt, take the call over, which goes into point two, which has to do with this lights and sirens, no lights and siren dilemma is when do we as a medic, when do we say, no, that call can go BLS or I'm going to take it ALS or I'm going to go ALS lights and sirens. Well, ALS lights and sirens, we know what that's going to be. Major, major life threats. You know, again, altered mentation, abnormal vitals. We got, okay, we got that. But what about a, a case where we are going to downgrade? What if we're on the fence of downgrading and upgrading, right? What if we're on the fence? I would tell you this. If you are thinking in your head that you're on the fence, always go a step farther. Because going a step farther isn't going to hurt your patients. Going a step under is going to hurt your patient. So any time where you're on the fence, hmm, should I tech this or should I give it to my partner? Hmm. You think that, you're teching the call by default. Again, put yourself in the patient's shoes, right? The last thing you want to do as a medic is be driving the ambulance to the hospital because you downgrade the call BLS. And then on the way to the hospital, something happens. They have a seizure. Their vitals change. They need to stop the ambulance, get in the back, scramble around, go out to the hospital. You'll don't want, you don't want, you've seen, probably seen it. If you're an EMS, you've probably seen that happen before. You don't want it to happen to you. So think through the patient and make your decision. My advice. My friends, this video was a good segment when we're talking about on the job tips. And I know a lot of people that are new EMTs, advanced EMTs, paramedics, maybe doing clinical. You want to get really good at what you do. That's the whole reason why you're here in the first place. So what I've done is I put together an entire video study course, school prep for every level, national registry prep, cognitive, that's in there. I've also put together on the job tips and all of the EMS medications. Learning all that, it totals over 400 videos of content plus access to me inside our private student group where there are thousands of students inside the Paramedic Coach course. Now, you can get that course by clicking the link in the description. If you go now, I'll give you a lifetime access. You can really get this stuff nailed down. My friends, thank you for being here. Hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you next time. Take care. Waste, don't waste any time. Don't, don't be hesitant and just do it because I know this program works. And I know it's, it got me to where I was, where it's been a year without school from EMT to, hey, I passed my test in 70 questions. Like, go for it. You could do it. Like, do not hesitate and don't waste any time. People that don't know you, they need to, they need this program. This program is not a, a choice. To me, this program is a have to. Take uh, uh, thousands and thousands of pages in the books and you just narrow it down and just make everything simple to pass the registry. So uh, it's, it's, it's great content, man. I promise you it's worth it. I took this with three weeks left to go in my class and I just, I'm not sure if I would have been able to pass my course or the NREMT first try without this course. The fact like when I was taking the, the national and I would read the question and I, I would be like, whoa, Evan literally just went over this in the car. So it's, it really, it helps. I got to the point where I was just ready to spill all my knowledge onto this freaking test. So I'm like, you know what, man, just go ahead, go for it, open it up. Boom, congratulations, you passed. It was um, outside of having my children, man, it's probably the, like the happiest day of my life, bro, to be honest with you.